Okay, everyone, so here we are in the quail, quail's kitchen. And um, so just to start us off, like we're just gonna have a little soft intro to all the many artworks we're gonna be looking at today. <laughs> so let me see, okay. So why do a stream about fine art and food? Well, if you think about it, food is a very, like, intrinsic, like it's a very, uh, how should I say, mm, important intrinsic part, not just to how we live, but also to our culture, to our religion. Uh, it is like food surrounds like to like every aspect like like have a lot of aspects of our health. It is also representations of how our bodies function. Like you know, we eat it, we excrete it. It's like there's like it's like it represents this never-ending cycle. And for this reason, food ha it has taken on a lot of different symbolism in foods. It can take on a very abstract form. It can also take on forms that are very literal, just for the sheer pleasure of looking at the food. I mean, how many of us have a like food porn Pinterest board? Yeah, like I, I've got a whole Pinterest just dedicated to food pictures. And why is that? Because we're drawn to food. It's ple like it's pleasurable. It's like, um, but it's also at the same time it can represent death, like the decay, the rot. So, you know, there's all these different facets to food, and I think that is why it has fascinated artists for so many, like for so long since the dawn of time. Like we see the cave paintings, like you know, like the Han sets, so like. As a representation of food we like even um in egypt like food is like a representation of wealth how much how much you grow how much you give it's all that but at this but also there's a dark side to food it's gluttonous if you have too much of it you know so there's this balance that artists can play with it's the great argentinian bake-up it is it is twinkle toes i'm happy you can join us yes the Bake Off is about to begin, so we're just starting with a soft little intro to the world of like food and art. And we're just going to be touching on them little by little as we go along. Like, oh, the polar cat, you're going to cook? Yes, I am going to cook. I am going to cook right here. We've got all our ingredients with us. We're going to be making Mother Quail's famous lemon meringue pie. <laughs> While we look and admire and most importantly learn about many different... Um, uh, many different artworks like so for instance the first things that we think about when it comes to uh, like art and food the first pieces that we think of are still lifes which are the easiest representations of food you put a like for instance like you put a bowl of food or fruit on a table or by a window and you have a whole beautiful composition to, to paint and they become a feast for the eyes so to speak and for artists, still lifes, and most importantly, painting food was a really important factor in learning the techniques of painting and learning the techniques of color and texture. So that's why they became so important and that's why we have so many of them. Let's see, fried quail, no, no polar cat, no fried quail today. But if something goes wrong with the burner, I mean, we could have fried quail. <laughs> Long time no see. Oh, Spix Galaxy, it's been so long. How are you? Should I say it? I'm so happy that everyone is here today. Well, we're going to get started with sifting some flour and cornstarch that I have separated here. <laughs> I already did all the measuring for you guys. Isn't that great? I'm just making life so easy. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that is the importance of, like, that is like the main aspect of still lives that we see in art there's one thing i've had to say tgif tgif yes yes tgif indeed it is friday people they're like okay so poogie you're 50 50 on lemon meringue but i bet mama quills is bomb though oh yes oh yes like if the, i've tried other lemon meringues but nothing like mama quills nothing like mama quills mm -mm. no no yeah, like speaking of lemons the reason why we're doing lemons the one of the reason other than the fact that it is so freaking delicious and it's my absolute favorite from mama quails is because lemons are seen almost everywhere especially in 
um, Dutch still lifes. Now, why were there so many lemons in Dutch still lifes? Basically, in almost every one, you'll always see a lemon or a lemon peel, like or some sort, like or a cut lemon or lemons just made in all these different um, elaborate compositions, as you see here. The Dutch were obsessed with their lemons, and now even though the Dutch had a lot of hidden meanings in their artworks, like a lot of them, they, they in their still lives sometimes like a certain placement of a glass or a tongue or a tumbled uh, a tumbled over like plate, for instance, was a re was a way of saying I don't like the church, I don't like what the church is doing. So there's a lot of hidden symbolism behind Dutch paintings, but not for the lemons. No, no. The lemons didn't serve any symbolic meaning. Mm -mm. The lemons were just a way for the artist to show off. Because lemons are really, really difficult to paint. Extremely difficult because of the color, the texture, the shape. And so, it basically became a pissing contest between the Dutch painters. They said, let's see who can make the best lemons. Who's, let's see who can paint the best lemons. And uh, <laughs> so that's how, that's how they, that's why if you go into a museum and see all the lemons, well, they were basically in competition with each other. Lemons were hashtag trending in the 17th century. The Dutch must have made a lot of um, tones of lemon. <laughs> Yes, they did. They must have made up tons of lemonade, which is so funny because, you know, when you first think of it, okay, at, at first people thought, well, they're probably putting lemons because citrus is very hard to come by. It's, um, you know, so it's a representation of wealth, for instance, and all these other good things. But then later on, they figured out, no, they were just battling out against each other. It was like battle of the bands, but battle of the lemons. A lot of lemons, that's a lot of lemonade, yes. Um, is it the same as orange but yellow? Well, if you think about it, the shape itself, because the lemons have this oval, like, oval shapes, and so that's what made it very tricky. Um, like, we are talking about art, yes, Space Galaxy, we're talking about art while we bake. <laughs> so it's a win-win situation. Let's see, I'm gonna put this here. So what I just did, I just sifted a combination of cornstarch, flour, and sugar together. Now, I always like to sift my sugar, especially the sugar, granulated sugar that's here in the US, because I find it to be a lot more coarse and compact. I just seem to get better results every time I sift it, so I sift it with my flour. Like, um, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Yes, yes, I knew someone was gonna say that. <laughs> Like, oh, like, he like, hello, hello, like, um, Mi Mirror Vic, welcome into the stream. <laughs> like, I've been so good. Happy New Year to you as well. Oh, it's so lovely to hear from you. Thank you, thank you. Now, I'm so happy you're here to join us for our very first fine art, the like, great fine art um, baking show. So I'm kind of living my dream like, after my favorite um, TV show, if, if anyone is, like, uh, isn't realizing. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. So I have my mother quail's like recipe right here. So I have to reference it and make sure I get this right because I have a lot to lift up to. Let's see. Enlarge mixing bowl. Okay, and add the butter and mix. Okay, dokies. Then comes the butter. Let's see. Um, are you using those super fine sugar? I think it's called caster sugar. No, no, I'm not using caster sugar. This is just like regular granulated sugar. Um, uh, I'm not using like the the, the powdered version, if that's what you're talking about, powdered sugar. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. But one thing that is important is I am using Mayer lemons for this recipe, Mayer lemons. Like the traditional American lemons aren't, I, aren't, aren't as satisfying as the Mayer lemons. So if you want to replicate this recipe, which I will be posting to my Discord. So if anyone wants this, I'll be posting it to my Discord. Uh, they, um, be sure that you get mayor lemons. Let's see, let's see. Um, so yeah, so going back to what we were saying before, in the medieval times, like in terms of symbolism and everything, and, and in terms of food, honey and bees are a very strong repetitive like, symbol that we see like, um, reappear in these, old, like, um, in these old paintings. Now, why is that? Why is that? 
Well, bees at the time, like really strongly represented how society works. Like, and we also because you know you have the king, that like, you have the king and the worker bees. Back then, they didn't know about the queen bee. They thought like the queen bee was actually a king bee. So they thought, oh, the bees are just like us. So they loved putting bees across, um, uh, like how should I put it, um, armors and like all these like uh, book of hours, which are like these really beautiful illustrated books for them to look at because they were like, oh, like the bees are just like us. We have to represent the bees. And not to mention bees are referenced in the Bible a lot. So more often than not, you're going to see a lot of references in regards to honey and in regards to bees when you are studying like the, these kinds of works. So that is just like a little fun fact for all of you out there. <laughs> But um, but in, but we're not just going to be talking about old works. We're also going to be talking about a lot of modern works as well. Like especially this artist, like whose name I will not dare to pronounce. So I'm going to try to pronounce his last name, Sparne. Sparne. <laughs> so what is so great about Sparne? Well. Sparne is very similar to the Dutch masters that we were seeing who did all the lemons. Like, but he created a new type of realism, which is called mega realism, where he just takes things that are small and just paints them larger than life. Art is usually very hard for me. Oh, is this Space Galaxy? I think, yeah, like it's it, in, even though I got my master's in art, it's hard for me too. <laughs> Speaking of honey, I have it right here with me. Oh, Twinkle Toes, it's like you knew. <laughs> Let's see, um, like pure honey, oh. Pure honey always wins. Pure, pure honey for the win, my friends. <laughs> this stream is making me hungry. <laughs> well, good. Then it's doing the job because watching all those baking show ma shows makes me hungry. Um, but um, but yeah, no. Like this artist, like Sparne, he they create like he's from the Netherlands and he created this new form of realism and he called it mega realism. Um, so if you just look closely at how. He, um, we have to get in with the hands. They're washed, everyone, they're washed, but we have to get handy with this. Um, he created a form of, by the way of how he crops the composition, just making it look like this really up close picture, kind of like if you wanted to post um, like a, re a really tantalizing uh, food, uh, <laughs> food post to Instagram, that's kind of how he crops his pieces. Let's see, I'm just gonna be watching. Oh, Space Galaxy, yes, just watch away. I enjoy that. I hope I hope you um they uh I hope it tickles your taste buds, this stream. <laughs> Those are great. Yeah, Poogie, right? They're really nice. Like um my whole Pinterest board is covered with his works. But I mean look at that piece. It's a larger than life egg yolk. But and it's all done with oil paints, which is beautiful. Right? Twinkle Toes does look amazing. Like, it's mega higher than hyper. It is mega higher than hyper. I think it's, it's basically hyper realism, but the way how the artist like chooses the subjects, which are these very small pieces, because food is small. Food isn't meant to be this colossus, the, the, these larger than life paintings, you know? They're meant, like, usually still lives are also very small in competition like look look at the scale that he's working at <laughs> it does look so real i always i actually when i first came across his work i thought they were photographs because they were just so good <laughs> let's see the egg is impressive and it has a glistening to it which makes it look irresistible yes no that's just little shine mm. gosh now now i'm getting hungry and i'm the one handling the food this is not a good good situation to start with <laughs> Yeah, so what I'm doing here, everyone, I'm just kind of like needing the, like, I'm going to say kneading, but I know that's not the word. I'm just kind of like, working the butter into the, the dry ingredients that I have going on here. <laughs> like, great quail, now I have to make a Pinterest account. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> but you will be able to find Sparnay's work on the, on the Pinterest if, that's, um, if that tickles your fancy. <laughs> Let's see, um, what do we got here? Next on our 
mama quail's recipe list. Let's see, once the butter is fully integrated, mix the egg yolks. Ha ha, I'm a genius. Okay, soon this butter will be everywhere and my hands will be glistening smooth. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, so that's when things are going to get a little bit gnarly once the egg yolks get incorporated. But I think this is looking pretty good. Hi, oh, yes, Mama Quill's going to be so proud of us, guys. <laughs> She's going to be so very proud. Okay. Mm. But kind of bouncing off of... Um, Sparnay's work a little bit like like you all were saying it makes me hungry. I want to eat it. It looks so good Well, there was this Movement there was this movement in the 1960s that was called the eat art movement now It was kind of spurred from the commercialism and like the pop art the like, pop art era and they just wanted you to really embrace the quantity and like also Mm, how should I put it? Um, ephemeral nature of food <laughs> and also just the, the mass quantity of what food is and like also with the dawn of commercialism how fake it can actually be. Uh, when you have crusts in your fingers and handle lemons and like lemons and lime, oh, <laughs> I don't want to imagine that. So it's gonna happen soon. <laughs> uh, but let's see. Well, now it's time to add our little magic egg yolks. We're just gonna do an SMR right here. <laughs> that looks gross. We're just gonna do this quickly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, so Still Lives, as we see in this work by Roy Lichtenstein, who I'm sure you've all have seen um, at some point, the artist that embraced the comic book aesthetic. So even he was fascinated by uh, by food and and still ice themselves, but let's see. But no one does it did it quite like Wayne Theobald. No, Wayne Theobald really got his acclaim um, in like the 1920s, but his influence they de definitely had an impact in the eat art movement. Now, Wayne Theobald, which is so great, is to like it, it's how should i put it it's not hyper realistic like like the previous work that we just saw the mega realism but it still looks so delicious doesn't it don't you don't you all just love the looks of those cakes with the thick application of um of the paint to almost make it look like frosting and um, also with those defined shadows those shadows that are they if you just look, it just they contain so many colors, so many colors that um, it's just not real, but our mind reads them to be very realistic, which is so fun. And um, and what he did is embrace a new type of realism. It was a new realism, the realism that was very much his own, but it was inspired by advertisements and um, again this this new rise in commercialism and making and being able to make food in mass quantities, for instance. I can totally see Wayne's work in a pastry shop. Right, Corin? Yeah, I do too. I do too. No, he loved going to pastry, like going to pastries and bake shops. Oh, he loved it, loved it. Yeah, no, and um, I could stare at his work for hours. And it's not even pictures of real food. Like, it's like um again like it's if you look at it closely it's not like hyper realistic or anything but we read it and we still see it as so delicious and that's why i love his work <laughs> i mean look at those wedding cakes <laughs> but if you but like by looking at all the shadows you see like the the different tones of purple and little hints of green it's just oh it, it it's really a feast for the senses that, like his work which is what I love so much. <laughs> what do you all think? Would you take a bite of, like, what, what would you all eat out of Theobald's work? <laughs> would you go for the ice creams or the cakes? <laughs> what do you all think? Which calls the heart? Yeah, it appears to be gluttony, like um, gremlin to, in me. Oh yeah, <laughs> it appeals to that. 
<laughs> I'm sure he would have been very happy to hear that. The cakes seem nice. Oh, okay, Boogie approves of the cakes. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, um, who can turn like who can turn down ice cream? Ah, oh, yes, hands of malice. Hands of malice. Who can turn down ice cream? What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Hands of malice. What, like like or anyone who wants to integrate integrate into that? Because <laughs> mine is uh, dark chocolate. Anything super dark chocolate can't go wrong with me. <laughs> Let's see, no. Like I said, things are getting gnarly here in the kitchen. <laughs> Let's see, um, da -da -da, mix egg yolks, add the heavy whipping cream. Okay, the time has come, ladies and gentlemen, for even more, more SMR gluttony uh, moments, but I have to quickly get the heavy whipping cream from the pantry. So if you excuse, from the fridge, I should say. So if you please excuse me. <laughs> Let's see, vanilla with chocolate syrup. Ooh, that's a good one. Twinkle Toast, strawberry for sure. Oh, rum raisin. Oh, Corwin, if you like rum raisin, you would love this type of ice cream that they have in Argentina. That's called Sambajon. Sambajon ice cream. Oh no, you'd love it. It's a kind of um, like a port. It's a port ice cream. I think you'd really like it. Let's see, favorite ice cream, Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Ch chubby hubby. Oh, chubby hubby. That sounds beautiful. I like that. I'll have to try that. Chubby hubby features vanilla malt ice cream with peanut... F oh, I'm gonna have to say this right. Chubby hubby features vanilla malt ice cream with peanut fudge covered pretzels and fudge and peanut buttery swirls. <laughs> I hope I did that justice for you. <laughs> OMG, ice cream and alcohol combo can never go wrong. Right, Corn? I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> but of course, we cannot talk about, you know, food and art without at least referencing once, um, uh, like, um, Andy Warhol. And of course, his famous Campbell Soups, <laughs> which was the perfect representation of, you know, like, Art, like food, art, advertisement, um, and consumer culture. Because basically the way that he displays the Campbell soup cans like this, he said it was uh, supposed to be a representation of how you would see food in a, in a grocery aisle. Then, you know, so it's kind of like looking like that. And the second aspect is how he made them because they're not paintings, they were made using screen printing, and screen printing is what we use to make t-shirts in mass quantities. And by using that process, it again enhances the concept behind the work, that it's about consumerism and mass quantities of food. Now, so you gotta put two spoons of this, heavy whipping cream. Now, one is always left with a lot of whipping cream, as you could tell, it was a brand new batch. But um, what I like to do is um, make, like whip it to make some, like I like to whip it and then uh, ease it with um, strawberries. I like cream and strawberries. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Let's see. Mm, but yeah, no, like this. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> this is so cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay. And that is all the ingredients for Mama Quail's famous uh, <laughs> famous pie crust. Now this is the crust that we don't just use for our lemon pie. We also use it for our pumpkin pie, our pecan pie, and everyone dies for this crust. But it's very simple to make, as you can see. You don't even need a spoon. <laughs> you don't even need a spoon to make this crust. <laughs> Yeah, I know, Corin's like looking like, what is going on here? <laughs> uh, let's see, mm. almost got this. Okay, now moving forward from Andy Warhol, we're gonna look at something a little more interesting. Who here has heard of this body of work that was called Lick and Lather by Janie Anthony, Lick and Lather? 
And let's see if you can guess what it might be about or what it is made of. What are these busts made of? If anyone can take a good guess. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> Soap. Okay, Johnny Sim says soap. Yes, the white one is made of soap. I could guess. And Choco. Yes, Twinkle Toes. The other bus are made of chocolate. They are made of chocolate. Now let's see. I'm just laying down my my dough here. <laughs> but yes, no. That is that's exactly what they're made of. Gosh, you are too smart for me. <laughs> you are way too smart for me. Let's see. Get all of the crumbs out of here. Okay, now we're gonna enter the realm where I'm gonna have to start putting this into the mold. I know you cannot see with the with the camera angle, but I will definitely pull it up for everyone to see <laughs> in a moment. Let's see. Uh, I'm just hungry. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, it's. I'm I'm here looking at food, teaching about like fine art and food, and at the same time handling food. So imagine me. <laughs> Um, let me see, let me see. Yeah, because um, the purpose behind this work is the artist wanted to create a body of work that represented two important things, which was um, eating and bathing, you know, which, is, which are two interesting concepts. And she made these busts of herself and, and casted them in soap and chocolate. And throughout the course of the exhibition, she would feed herself by eating the chocolate, and she would bathe herself by using the um, by, by using the soap busts. So let's see, I actually have a perfect little movie to show you all. It was really interesting that soap was made out of lard, that we're cleaning the body with the body. It seemed quite curious to me. So I had this idea that I would make a replica of myself in chocolate and in soap, and I would feed myself with myself by licking the chocolate and wash myself with myself. Both the licking and the bathing are quite gentle and loving acts, but I'm slowly erasing myself. For me, it's about that conflict, that kind of love-hate relationship we have with our physical appearance. And really, like, the problem I have of looking in the mirror and thinking, is that who I am? Well, I was loving everyone's reactions to... To, to that piece. <laughs> Polar cats is that me messed up, like um, other people thinking that it's interesting. And Corin, I'm with you. That would last me a good year in my bathroom, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Let's see. You all cannot tell, I'm just here pressing my crust into the pie mold. <laughs> so bear with me, everyone. This is the trickiest part. Let's see. But um, but yeah, no, Mash Stars, we are talking about food. I'm happy to see you here, Mash Stars, by the way. Yeah, no, I'm just pressing my pie, pie crust for our lemon meringue pie into the mold as we speak. While we discuss a little bit about this concept of using food in art. Now, it's very interesting that these art, this is basically these sculptures, these busts. Um, is more of a performance piece than a final piece because at the end of the day, there's not going to be anything left. And because she's erasing her identity, she's erasing the art piece as a whole. So it makes you think about the ephemerality of food and um, and also like of our bodies, how we slowly decay over time. So there's a lot of different parallels that one can draw from all this. Licking and scrubbing, yes, licking and scrubbing. That would have been another good title for the work. No, she's baking lemon pie. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Boogie. How unexpected. Yeah, right? It's very unexpected. It's very, very unexpected. Let's see? Just gotta even out this dough because 
I know everyone, for all of those of, of you who know, Mama Quill is omnipresent. And, she, and so I know she's going to be judging my, like, um, my, uh, my baking skills, making her famous pie. <laughs> mm, if I do lick and lather, I think I will end up with a lot less chocolate pieces. <laughs> me too, me too. They would have to make it milk chocolate because if it's dark chocolate, there's no hope. It'll be, it'll be gone. The whole exhibition will, will have ended before it even started. <laughs> that would, at least that would be me. But, um, but she is not the only artist, um, and for those of you who don't know, she's actually from the Bahamas, which is very interesting. Uh, but she's not the only artist that has um, worked with food to, like, um, as an actual medium for, for the piece, to make her pieces. Another great one is um, uh, this Brazilian artist called Munes, like, and he, he likes to recreate these famous artworks, like the Mona Lisa, you, like um, using actual food. One of his favorite um, mediums to work with is chocolate, but I really like his peanut butter and jelly Mona Lisa's. Let's see. Um, uh, let me show you, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's very, very interesting the, his approach to the works because he's not changing the art pieces at all. They're the same composition, they're, it's everything, but he's just recreating them in chocolate and um, and in this case with peanut butter and jelly which I find it to be interesting that he would choose the Mona Lisa to make the peanut butter and jelly these two intrinsic ingredients that are very much American like the combination is very much American I've yet to eat anything with peanut butter and jelly personally because <laughs> um, I just don't imagine that tasting good <laughs> let's see Jelly over peanut butter. Okay, Twinkle Tells, I agree. I, I agree with you. Definitely more of a jelly girl. Yeah, artistic PB and J. Yes, Karin. Exactly. That's what it was meant to be. An artistic P PB and J. <laughs> um, oh, before I forget everybody, before I keep working our beautiful pie crust here, I have to quickly turn on the oven because I always seem to forget that. So let's see. It says here we got to preheat it to 325. got that going so that gives me time to make this pie crust all the more beautiful <laughs> the sleep night warrior was actually on paper or was that um, actually on bread it, that one was on paper most of his works he just recreates on paper but that would have been a lot more interesting to use the bread I, I would have preferred that actually let's see um, let's see oh like like, uh, like, Vena, it's so good to see you here, Vena. Thank you so much for all the emotes. That's so sweet. <laughs> I think you really look amazing today. Oh, Night Warrior, you flatter me so. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, like, this is our last stream of, of the year. I had to, I had to bring out all the stops. <laughs> that beautiful pie crust, so beautiful, too beautiful. Oh, thank you, Vena. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's, it's starting to look better, everyone. Have faith in the quail. Have faith in the quail. Right now, I'm just trying to roll it to give it a nice, good, good base. But right now, the crust is a little overpacked, so I kind of have to move it around to make sure that there's enough room for the filling itself. I wish you all can see exactly what I'm doing, but let's see. Maybe if I lower the camera a little bit. No, can't do that. Now we're gonna have problems. <laughs> Let's see, um, I still cannot believe I made you cry the last time when I said I really did, like, did come from my heart. Oh, it, it really meant a lot to me. Thank you so much, Night Warrior. No, I, and I could tell that it came from the heart, so thank you. <laughs> we have an understanding. <laughs> but, um, let's see. Uh, does the pie cross got, um, <laughs> does the pie cross have an Instagram? <laughs> it ought to, it ought to, because this recipe that I'm showing you all here, I say that it's famous because when um, Mother Quail was um, even younger than me, when she was in her teens, uh, like she made this lemon pie recipe, this pie crust recipe, and made her lemon meringue pies. And she sold, and she would sell them in Argentina. She sold them all by herself. She didn't have a storefront or anything. Um, 
but um, but she sold them, and with that money, she was able to um, afford a trip to um, uh, was it um, to go skiing and also to afford French lessons. So you can imagine how many pies she must have sold. Oh, everyone loved her lemon meringue pie. Mm, no one went anywhere else. No, they just had to go see Mama Quail for the lemon meringue pie. <laughs> Mama Quell is so enterprising. She really is. She really is. She even had this, um, and they, she even made a lot of money when um, she, she, what she did, she bought these um, white shoes that they sell in Argentina, which are called apargatas. And with, and with those apargatas, they're just basically canvas shoes. Um, if you think of oh, like Tom shoes, they're basically Tom shoes. And she, what she did, she painted them by hand. She would paint these beautiful little strawberries and ladybugs, and she would then, um, and then she would change the laces out and put ribbons instead, which was very unique for the time. And with that, and they were asking her to sell all her, um, all her shoes in storefronts, in really fancy storefronts, and everyone would stop on the street to look at her shoes. Oh no, it was so much fun. So much fun. To this day, I hear the stories. It's like, Mama Quail really is, is a one of a kind. <laughs> like, that, that pie stay hustling. Yeah, I know, this pie is hustling, people. It's hustling. Because it's not a pie crust that you just roll and lay flat. You have to work the edges and make sure that, okay, this pie crust ain't going anywhere. <laughs> And the filling is really going to stay in because you have to work the edges a lot on it. As you can see, I'm kind of going in, trying to make a nice good crevasse, I should say. <laughs> a nice good crevasse. And so you just slowly go kneading it along the edges, adding pie crust where it need be. <laughs> like like um, the Converse shoes. I, I have a pair of those. Yeah, kind of like the Converse shoes. Yeah, but a little more simple, more like the Toms. Kind of a crossbreed between Converse and Toms. <laughs> That's the idea, at least. <laughs> Let's see, we're getting this out. Oh, this is coming together, everyone. <laughs> and I'll be able to wash my hands and change the screen. <laughs> Ma Mama the Hustler Quail. Oh, Vena, you so get her. So get her. Yeah, no, she's, she's a good hustler. Mama Quail. Oh, yeah. Like, I... I always tell people, listen to Mama Quail. She's always right, because I, I just kid you all not, she's always right. The woman's always right. <laughs> so if anyone, that's why we have um, uh, point redemptions for Ask Mama Quail, like for, like for viewer points, like if anyone needs to ask Mama Quail a question about anything, you know, that's, that's why it's there. <laughs> that's why it's there, just saying, you can ask her anything. <laughs> Did they have a soft sole? Yes, the sole was pretty thin and soft, just like a simple rubber sole. Um, how do you make sure the crust isn't too thick or too thin? I tend to make mine too thin and it cracks during baking time. Yes. Um, I just like to think, um, how should I put it? At least with me, what I do, uh, I can always tell by uh, kind of like, at least with this dough, you can kind of tell by the transparency. I don't know how like how to explain it exactly, but you kind of feel around, what I do is I kind of feel around the crust and feel like, okay, which areas feel harder and softer than others? Um, and, all, and you try to imagine, okay, is this edge deep enough? Is the edge gonna be deep enough to hold like the filling for the crust as well? Um, I think, oh, I'm trying to think of another good tactic to make sure it doesn't get too thin. Um, I mean, I'm personally, I'm a, I'm a crust girl, so I'm never afraid to put more crust than need be. <laughs> because I, for me, the crust is my favorite part of a pie. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's always my favorite. I never understand people that leave the pie crust behind. <laughs> um, so I just say, like, at least, like, I try to keep the pie crust about, like, a pinky finger length um, depth. Like, I kind of see at least for you, Cora, and I try to match my pinky finger to like the edge of the pie crust mold, if that makes sense. And with that, I, I haven't been able, I haven't gone wrong yet. <laughs> haven't gone wrong yet. 
Looks like you used all of it. Yeah, I pretty much used all of it. Yeah, it kind of really worked out this time. I have a little, a little bit of leftover dough. Probably shouldn't do this, but... Hmm, it's good. <laughs> we did good, everybody. <laughs> hmm. I haven't made pie yet, but I'm definitely going to try it. Oh, yes, Twinkle Toes, you should. Yes. Oh, uh, well, hey, you're going to have Mama Quail's, like, um, recipe pretty soon. So, <laughs> since you're in the Discord, I'll be posting it there. Like, and it's, as you can see, it's a very simple pie crust. Very simple pie crust. And that was our oven going off there. So, what we need to do with this pie crust, which will help your pie crust from cracking, um, corn, by the way, is we're going to take a fork and you're just gonna kind of go to town pinching the bottom of of your pie crust so let's see you don't have to do too many just make sure they're just like evenly distributed and what this does it just makes sure no air bubbles gets into your crust and um, because by there not being air bubbles it'll keep it from from cracking so I know you can kind of quite see but those are my little marks <laughs> my little like stabbing fork marks <laughs> let's see mm, let's see when I still made pie I just depended on what the feeling I was using I went with as possible when I made pecan pie oh nice um your daughter oh that's <laughs> to ask mama quail like ask mama quail let's see your daughter is a great streamer and everyone says how kind and attractive she is but the real Question is, are you a sing are you single mama quail? Oh, someone is asking if Mama Quail is single. Okay, well we're gonna have to ask this of Mama Quail. Let's see. Well, first things first, we gotta get this in the oven. Hey Siri, set a timer for 15 minutes, please. 15 minutes, counting down. Full proof. <laughs> let's see, um, let's see. Oh, nice trick. I will try to remember that. Yes, corn. yeah, it's a really good trick. Always, always uh, puncture holes in the bottom of your crust. That'll definitely help. Oh, and I have a nice little pile of leftover crust here. Yay. <laughs> oh, but, um, but yeah, we'll have to ask Mama Quill that. I, like, I'll admit to everyone, Mama Quail was going to join us in the stream originally, but she is very sick at the moment. She's sick with a really bad cold, so that is why uh, she is not here in the kitchen with me today. <laughs> Let's see, um, you look so beautiful. Oh, early middle ages, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, I have to dress up for all of you. I love it. <laughs> I have to put my best foot forward after all. I thought, I thought everyone did that. <laughs> You'd be surprised. They, they don't tell you everything on the baking shows. They don't re reveal everything. Okay, uh, now the quail needs to quickly go wash her hands so I can change the screen of the computer. I'll be right back. <laughs> And we are back and squeaky clean. <laughs> Let's see, uh, where did I grow up? I grew up everywhere, early middle ages. I've been, um, I grew, I've grown up in uh, the United States, in Switzerland, Argentina. I am a child of the world. <laughs> I'm a child of the world, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see, let's see. Ah, uh, yes, I know which... Okay, so for our next audio work, which you just saw me take a little, a little like bite out of, uh, <laughs> out of pie crust for a moment there, uh, we're going to be looking a little bit at this piece by Judy Chicago. This piece was made in um, the like the mid nineteen seventies, 
and it's entitled Dinner Party. Well, how I wish I could have you all over for a dinner party. That would be so much fun. Uh, but what is what is really um, groundbreaking about this work? It like what you don't realize right off the bat. It just looks like a ta this triangular table with these abstract plates on it. But actually, it is a symbolic history of women in civilization. And it was a very interesting idea to combine the idea of a woman sitting at the table versus a woman being in the kitchen. So, it's, so basically, each of these place settings represent a, an important female figure that we've had throughout history. And the plates are designed with these, uh, how should I put it, um, ceramic uh, sculpt, like three-dimensional sculptures that are these plates. That 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 more the some more subtly than not um, reference female genitalia, <laughs> and um, and yeah, so it's basically a showcase of um, like of feminism throughout history, like through this representation of these abstract plates and food, so to speak, at this dinner table. Spe oh, speedy recovery from Mama Quail. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes, no, Mama Quail needs needs to recover. We need her in tip top shape. <laughs> we need her in tip top shape. But I won't forget about redeeming your question. By the way, I won't forget about that. We'll we'll see if we can get catch her at the end of the stream to answer that. Let's see. Um, I was wondering about that. Yes, yes. Um, let's see. It looks like an octopus. Yes, some of the pieces do look like an octopus. Uh, but one thing is for me to talk about this. Another thing is we have the artist herself to share, like, to share some of the like some of her insights about this work. So let's see. I'm gonna quickly mute the music. Okay, here we go. You know, the dinner party is structured as a narrative through Western civilization, and the way Western civilization is usually presented is through the lives and accomplishments of various heroes. So in the case of the dinner party, that same civilization is presented through the lives of female heroes. And I decided I wanted the plates to rise up as you moved around the triangular table as a metaphor for liberation. But it isn't just a straight rise. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, because actually that relates to the currents of history. It hasn't been a straight forward progress. There have been periods that have been better and worse for women through history. And the rise and fall of the plates chronicles that. And then, of course, with the rise of the international feminist movement in the 19th century, then the plates begin to just develop and develop and develop and start pushing off the plate surface, trying to get off the table. Because after all, women don't belong on a table. Yeah, some, some do look like octopuses. I will give you that. <laughs> um, but yes, no, so a uh, very interesting piece. A lot of symbolic reference to it. Uh, what I'm going to do, everyone, I'm just going to quickly move the setup that we have right here. Um, I'm going to try to see, I'm going to be moving between here and the stove because now it's time for us to make the feeling for our lemon meringue pie. Uh, what, I, what I have going on in the double boiler is uh, some sugar and I'm now going to add uh, five egg yolks to the, like, to the mix. So that's going to be going on a medium heat. Beautiful. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I feel like I'm on a cooking channel. <laughs> doesn't seem very appetizing though. No, Corin, it doesn't. No, it definitely doesn't. <laughs> Um, unless you're a really big fan of octopus, I don't see that really working. But going on to something a little more appetizing, we do have these soft sculptures by Oldenburg. Now, you've probably all seen Oldenburg's piece with the spoon and the cherry that is, is this, this giant spoon with a cherry right at the end that sits in the center of a park. Well, these pieces right here were his most controversial pieces. Now, what do you all think about these? These are called his soft sculptures. We have floor cone, floor cake. Like, it's just not, not exactly tantalizing, I'd say. 
but they do look comfortable, those works. Womp womp. <laughs> womp womp is right, yeah. <laughs> Looks like a beanie bag. Yeah, definitely. They, they can, the artist has definitely sat on them. Some people have sat on them, so they do serve as beanie bags. Um, can you actually sleep in this art? It looks like you can. Yes, Night Warrior, you definitely can. Um, uh, like, oh, and Boss Baby still is here. Yay. Uh, um, let's see. Welcome in, welcome in. Uh, but let's see, um, what made these works, which you don't really see right out of the bat, but they're actually very controversial, or at least they were very controversial for the time, because it challenged this idea of, like, sculptures at the time, they thought, well, a sculpture needs to be made out of stone, it needs to be made out of acrylic at least, or wood, like something solid, something hefty, because that's what sculptures are for. But um, this artist said, no, I'm going to make these soft sculptures. I'm going to like, um, make them like, in these like, globulous forms, and I'm even going to deflate them. So they're not even to their fullest amount. They're even deflated, which makes them even look worse. And some people thought of this to be um, a lot of heresy to the art world or to the form of sculpture. Like, but look at all of you, you're finding them comfortable and tantalizing, you know? So there was like this paradox at the time though. Like there were people that literally made marches against this work. See, um, the way I see art is, do you see it? Um, not what they used to hack it back in the day and have a new vision of it and show it off. Exactly. Yeah, it just depends on the perspective and the zeitgeist of the time. Like, oh, Troll Bunny's here. Hi, Troll Bunny. Hi. <laughs> We're in the Quail's Kitchen today. Let me see. I know I was watching and driving. Oh, nice. Like, watching and driving will be safe, okay? <laughs> Let's see. What I'm going to try to do, everyone, I'm going to try to transport the stream over to the stove so that way I can keep an eye on the filling. So if you all can just bear with me one second. everybody <laughs> the quail is too tall to fit in the frame but this works <laughs> this works a bit let's see I'll just turn you a little bit yeah there we go that's a nice that's a nice view <laughs> let's see yeah I'm gonna make myself some food my stomach is growling oh you do that you do that twinkle toes let's see what we need to do now before any further ado is add our butter as you see I cannot wait to get in there <laughs> the butter can't wait to get started, clearly. <laughs> I love baking because I love it when I get to work with butter while I bake because it just makes your hands so moisturized. <laughs> All right, all right, everybody, here we go. All right, so now hopefully that's going to start melting in an orderly fashion. <laughs> and then we'll add like the actual lemon juice and the lemon zest, but that happens more towards the end. Let's see, what have we got here? Mm. Let's see, what's up? Oh, Agent 008, you made it! Welcome, we're just in time to make the filling for our lemon meringue pie. <laughs> made some flapjacks from Oreo, much, much, ooh, nice! Butter while I bake to the tune of Whistle as we work. Oh, Maximum, that's a lovely, lovely image you painted for us, yay! <laughs> I'm glad that I'm spending the last year of 2022 oh, with you, my queen, and making the delicious pie, Oh. The feels, the feels are real, the feels are real. 
<laughs> oh, I'm happy I get to spend it with all of you too. Thank you. Thank you much. <laughs> Let's say happy New Year's Eve. Oh, happy New Year's Eve to you too, Agent 00, 0028. <laughs> but yeah, no, we were just looking at these works. Um, these soft sculptures by Oldenburg and why they were just so controversial. Let's see, now time has come. Let's see, for us to add the lemon juice to our filling, because this will help it along. Let's see, there we go. That should do it. Oh, you all are going to love this. This is going to look so good. I think this might be my best attempt at Mama Quill's lemon pie yet. Let's see. Um, let's see. Have you made this pie before or is it your first time? It's not my first time, but it's my first time without Mama Quail, like, over my shoulder. <laughs> this is my first time without her over my shoulder. And, um, like, so she's not here to rescue the pie crust or anything like that, so... Ooh, we shall see. <laughs> we shall see, we shall see. Um, let's see, well, going back to the class at hand, <laughs> the class at hand, um, and like, up to now we've been looking at art that is very tantalizing, very, how should I put it, um, very delicious, to say the least, very delicious looking artwork, and, um, and mainly looking in terms of food in terms of the materials and the symbolic representation, but food has been used as a vehicle for um, a lot of protests, for a lot of advocacy, strangely enough. Uh, like there's, like, for instance, this work, which was really, really important for its times. Um, it's called A Fire in My Belly, which I'm sure a lot of you are feeling right now. Uh, a Fire in My Belly was um, created by this American artist, which really was a, a video piece. Oh, that's our pie crust, everybody. Ah, fingers crossed that it looks golden. Let's see. Neat. All right, let's see how this turned out. Mm. Now, I'm gonna give it five more minutes. Hey, Siri? Hey, Siri? How? Oh. Siri doesn't want to cooperate. I'm going to set a timer for five minutes. There we go. Okay. Um, so basically what... Uh, just hold on. This is just annoying. There we go. All right, that's better. So basically what this work was about, it was actually a combination of performance art and combined with video. So we had, it was a long 30 minute video with images of protests and um, a lot of violence at the same time the artist was sewing together this loaf of bread and while doing so also sewing his lips well granted it's not real but that that was the the process of his performance that was integrated into it well i still believe it's going to turn out delicious oh thank you night warrior <laughs> um that is like a bread hammock yeah it definitely, definitely does look like a bread hammock Fingers, um, like, toes crossed. Thank you, Corin. thank you. I think just five more minutes and we'll be good. Um, and what this piece was so great about is that it was a representation of silence. Now, combining this representation of silence with all these images of protests and angry mobs, for instance, it was a very strong um, juxtaposition. And what it really was, it was a representation of well, not representation, but the whole piece was supposed to be a reaction to the AIDS crisis and how, um, and it was also was said to be, I like, well, this is a new concept. This is actually pretty new. In the last year, this piece actually got banned from the museum that it was being showcased because they said it had too many anti-Christian sentiments. Like, and it had a lot of religious hypocrisy because here we have this loaf of bread which is a representation of the body of Christ we could we could argue and that in relation to the AIDS crisis and the LGBT community it, you, you can see how we can get very deep into this subject and go down a very dark rabbit hole very fast 
Let's see, um, breaking bread is bad. No justice, no peace. Exactly, Marsh Stars. Exactly. Siri didn't agree to have the stream. No, no agent double wait. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. Like sometimes Siri doesn't understand my accent. Sometimes she just doesn't get it. Siri is so done with 2022. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, she is. She definitely, definitely is. <laughs> oh, let's see. But yeah, here, here we basically have to wait for everything to melt and allow everything to thicken, which is taking its sweet little time. There we go. It is taking its sweet time. But um, but yeah, no, that's so. This piece that we're looking at right here, really controversial, really radical for the times. Um, but it's interesting how just a simple loaf of bread can mean so much, even in today, causing so much controversy. Like, but um, but this is not the only work that has used food to address the AIDS, um, like the, the disease and the how should I put it, um, and the sorrow surrounding AIDS. Now, who here has potentially seen this work, or at least this type of food? <laughs> like, uh, who can tell what these, what these are? I actually like this one um, the most of what you've shown so far. Oh, thanks, Mash Stars. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, maybe you might like this piece as well. This one is very engaging. Got to love controversy. Ah, oh, thanks, Twinkle Toes. Yeah, no. Uh, this piece um, it, like, is a whole pile, basically 175 pounds worth of candies. 175 pounds worth of candies. It doesn't look like much when it's set there in the corner of the, of the gallery. But what, they, what the artist wanted people to do, people were encouraged to go up to this pile of candy in the corner of the room and and take a piece and consume it and take it with them and slowly but surely throughout the exhibition the pile got smaller and smaller and smaller now what is this piece about well the artist is a cuban artist and what he wanted to do was create a piece that was about the physical decay of his partner his partner that died of aids at the age of 38 so this act of taking of taking away piece by piece all these candies, like just one at a time like that, was a representation of how like life just slowly left him. Okay, that is our five minute timer, so now the crush should be done. <laughs> everyone and now it looks pretty good it's pretty good a little bit goldeny on the edges no not too shabby not too shabby just a tiny tiny crack maybe in the middle but I think that's just like a surface thing so I think we're okay <laughs> Um, da -da -da -da. The air changes and electricity sparks as if the mighty presence enters the room. <laughs> Thanks, Phoenix. That's sweet. Mm, let's see, twinkle toes. Like all hail, like Phoenix. Aw, that's so adorable. It's a pastry crust for a graham crust. Like it is a pastry crust. Actually, it's a pastry crust. So, uh, graham crust consists. Um, like with more like spices, I should say, they could have like more like spice, like uh, cinnamon and spicy elements that you would see in a cookie. Uh, but mine is just like more sweet and buttery. More sweet and buttery. Let's see, a second. 
But, oh, this is starting to look good. Our butter is melting, everybody. Oh, I wish I could show you this. But no, this is going to be delicious. It's going to be delicious. Not pun intended based on the, the work that we're looking at right here. Let me see. Hello, my bros and sisters, Phoenix. I am so happy you're here with us. So, so happy. It's just in time because our pastry crust came out of the oven. And... Um, and we're getting close to thickening the, the filling for our lemon meringue pie. <laughs> yeah, but I missed you. I was wondering, where is Phoenix? Where is Phoenix? Uh, but yeah, no, this, this work is just really interesting, especially in the way that it's displayed, uh, being off in the corner like that. Um, it's kind of like imagining having um, a body off in the corner, which is very alone, very solemn, um, and not just... I don't know, it kind of creates the sensation of loneliness and as the pile slowly gets smaller and smaller as people take away from this 175 pounds worth of candy, you, you start to feel the, how should I put it, um, the, the sensation of loss that the artist felt losing uh, the love of his life, so to speak. Yeah, the love of his life. The loss, yeah exactly Corin, the loss. In my warrior candy. That's all you can think. <laughs> um, I was at a di dinner party, had to drive home. Oh, well, I'm so happy you made it home safe, Phoenix. So, so happy. Um, but yeah, so kind of taking the step back from uh, another idea of how food can represent bodies, not so much in the abstract sense, but also like a symbolic abstract sense, I should say, but also in a trick of the eyes. Now, this is a work. Uh, by like by this um, artist that painted these really intricate pieces in the 1500s. Imagine if we, this piece wasn't hanged the right way up. <laughs> it would just look like a natural bowl, like bowl of fruit. But really, it's supposed to be an anthropomorphic head. <laughs> what do you all think? Let's see. Um, I'm back bus service, nice. Welcome back, welcome back. So, oh, I'm so happy everybody is here. The whole family is here today. Oh, you all make me so happy. And it's an honor to bring you all into my kitchen, by the way. <laughs> my kitchen where the exhaust fan doesn't work and we only have one burner. This is literally the only burner that works in our in our kitchen. <laughs> you see, it's thickening up really well, everybody. Let's see. Hmm, I cannot tell what looks like, like what it looks like on the left. Yeah, on the left it's just supposed to be a bowl of fruit. That's the idea, yeah. Um, it's just a simple bowl of fruit is what it's supposed to be. And when you flip it the right way around, it's supposed to be a head. Let me see, Ch just to see you smile makes my day. Aw, oh, my warrior shucks. Yeah, you all are too sweet to me, you know that? <laughs> Let's see, this is looking good. Not thickening too much. Okay, so to get this to thicken a little bit, I'm just gonna add a little bit of flour to the mix. So don't mind if I do. Just gonna add a little bit at a time. Yeah. It's so funny, like this recipe, it works perfectly in Argentina, like absolutely perfectly. But here in the United States, it takes a little bit of trial and error. Like, I always have to add a little bit more sugar because for some reason the sugar here isn't as sweet. And, um, and the filling always needs a little bit of flour because I know it just comes out a little bit too runny. I can't wait for some pie. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh, no, we're going to be making, and we're also going to be making our own meringue. So stay tuned for, for the meringue. That is, that's going to be the hardest part. <laughs> That's going to be the hardest part. Okay, just going to put the flour in there. Got, we got to make sure we get this right for Mama Quail, everybody. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. I must say, Holy Quail, you're looking very delicious tonight. But thank you. That's the vibe I was going for. <laughs> Oh, do you want cure I am baking? Speaking of looking delicious, I forgot to add my egg 
apron. What the heck? What kind of chef am I? <laughs> what kind of chef am I? I totally forgot to wear my little apron. Sheesh. My little, little pink apron that could. <laughs> now we're all set. Now everything is going to look good. <laughs> Let's see. Mm. Use raw cane sugar next time. Oh, okay. I'll think, I'll look into that. Thank you, Phoenix. For those of you who don't know, Phoenix is practically a Michelin star chef. For anyone who doesn't know, like I've I've seen I've seen his cooking pictures. They're really delicious. Uh, I'm not sure I can make out the face when it's the right side up. Yeah, like um, I agree. Asian double like 28. Um, it is a bit of a of a stretch, but he has ones that are more intricate that are not meant to be viewed upside down. <laughs> but um, but you can definitely see the faces a lot better. Is Kuenus here? I don't know. Where is Kuenus? Like, oh yes, Kuenus. Yes, uh, Kuenus is actually Phoenix. Like Kuenus is Phoenix, so um, he is here with us. <laughs> um, haven't seen him yet. Yeah, no. Like, um, Kuenus is actually Phoenix. So, ta-da! <laughs> to be revealed. Just trying to get this to thicken everybody. But let's see. Let's switch the art piece. Because one work I want to talk about is Cezanne. Now Cezanne was really, really great um, with his still lifes, as we all know. Like he was obsessed with uh, peaches and oranges. <laughs> but who can tell me what is wrong in this composition? Can anyone tell what is off? Is there anything off in the way that it is painted or made? Um, I'm you are a you are a chef. Thank you. <laughs> and then um, two different names, same person. Exactly, exactly, guys. You gotta figure it out. <laughs> the lighting? No, it's not quite the lighting. It's not quite the lighting. It's act, but good guess. Good guess. His lighting was his own uh, specific style, but actually, it's the angles. Because if you look at the way the table is tilting up at us, it's kind of like we're looking at it from a bird's eye view, but then the pictures aren't, they're facing us like front side. It's because Cezanne had this very unique way of painting still lives, where he would never paint just from one position. He would move his canvas around the still life and get all these different angles. So you can see how some of the vases are kind of tilted up in front of us, some things are looking plainer and flat. So it was a way to create this dynamic, um, I should say, exchange, visual exchange. Dynamic visual exchange, everybody. I don't want this to burn. So yeah, no, very interesting what Cezanne did. Very unique for, for his times. Like he, I guess he was an artist that didn't want to sit still, right? <laughs> he just didn't want to sit still. I don't know why this isn't thickening. I'm just gonna remove this from the heat for one second and I'm gonna give Mama Quail a call because I'm not sure why this isn't getting thicker. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do like what they do in, in TV shows, which is like kind of get a phone call. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, turn the heat up. Oh, okay. She, you see how she knows? She knows. <laughs> okay, turning up the heat. Like, Mama Quail, I know you're listening. Is it okay to turn up the heat even though uh, everything is melted? <laughs> even though everything is melted? Let's see. Um, a true master knows many positions and those angles um, to really make your heart pound a visual. Yes, definitely. Uh, they must have been really bored back then. <laughs> yes, Joel Buddy, yes. Um, usually it is not enough heat oh okay thank you boss baby still 
And it seems like Cezanne will give Vermeer a heart attack with his weird angles. <laughs> yes, Corin, he would. Um, it has to reach a temperature that allows the sugars to react. Aha! Aha! I'm learning. You see, you all are teaching me while I like while I'm trying to teach you at the same time. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yes. Okay, you see? It's actually starting to get thicker. Oh, I learned something new today. <laughs> Miracle of miracles do happen. Let's see. Um, love you, magical mama quail. Aw, Phoenix, that's so sweet. Oh, we do love her. We do love her indeed. She's the best. <laughs> uh, and this is going to turn out perfect if my name isn't Winnie the Pooh. Hmm. Let's see, um, there are 28 heat zones we watch for in cooking. Oh, really? Like 26 heat zones? I didn't know that. Good to know, though. Good to know. Well, wow, kind of like the 26 angles of Suzanne, there are 26 heat zones. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, but continuing with this food channel. Uh, and earlier we were talking about Pinterest boards and food porn. Well, there is literally this uh, body of work that this artist did that is entitled food porn. <laughs> what do y'all think? <laughs> Let's see. Walking for this to be a Food Network show. <laughs> yes. It would be a fun Food Network show. Food and fine arts would be kind of interesting. <laughs> but yes, no, what we have here is a body of work that um, it's just supposed to like represent the sexualization of fast food. Like we have, um, like you see right there, we, we have some fast Chinese takeout and also the classic hot dog, which I pray that none of you ask me to, uh, to teach, how to, 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 to explain to you what that is supposed to represent. Please don't ask me. This is not a this is not a health and and course, <laughs> but um, but that gives you the uh, the idea. So, what he wanted to do was just embrace the idea of um, the deliciousness of food and the pun that is food porn, and just create this um, very sensual the, the, these very sensual pieces that like representing you you know you know what i'm talking about people hmm hot dogs between a bun is so yes okay good phoenix gets it phoenix gets it i thought it was an octopus in a bun yeah no it does have an octopusy vibe let's see the gl glizzy on screen is fitting yeah it definitely is the sexual innuendo <laughs> you said it corin you said it See. This is starting to thickening. Yes, it's thickened. I think. Hmm, I'm not sure if it's thick enough. But I think it's pretty thick. I think it's pretty. Looking good. Looking good. Let's see. Yeah, typical. Most people get in a rush when trying to thicken and um, not realize it takes time and chemical reaction. I know. I know. Yeah, I'm just an impatient quail. That's why I don't do well in the I'm not I'm, I do well in the kitchen, but not the best. <laughs> not the best. You see, I have a ways to go to get to Mama Quail status. Ah, but let's see. What do we have here? But speaking of uh, sexualizations of art pieces, uh, we have like um, Chloe Wise, who became very famous for her food art specifically. Like she loves combining. Um, food and art together, creating um, like the work, the body work that made her famous were like these Gucci purses that she made using loaves of bread, which is really fun. And also these sculptural works, which are supposed to, again, represent this idea of con consuming and the body, but also hinting a little bit back to the food port series, sensualization of some of these works, like the peaches and that like white liquid especially like this with the bananas and the milk and the butter you know there's a lot of sexual innuendos happening here as well <laughs> so it's not about the way it's painted but more so about the um 
the materials and the imagery and the way that they're displayed that, of how it's being used. at a moment. Maybe I turn up the heat just a little more. Mm, sex, food, and art go hand in hand. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, typical. Most people get in a rut. Yeah, Se sex, food, and go hand in hand because I think food um, is related to desire. Food is related um, to like deliciousness and to pleasures. What's more pleasurable than You, you know, like like we say in Spanish, the salto de tigre was more pleasurable than doing the, the jump of the tiger, I should say. <laughs> Food is also a consumption, and when you are uh, making love, you're consuming somebody's very well-being. Oh, that's a beautiful way to say it. Yes, absolutely. Banana is the most centralized fruit. <laughs> it is. I get, I, it's a good thing that bananas are migraine sugar so I can't I can't eat bananas because I just get very subconscious <laughs> um, there's just been too many artworks about bananas and so I can't get them out of my head and they're always sexual innuendos in reference to bananas <laughs> but um, but sometimes things are uh, combining food and art isn't always sensual sometimes it can be a little bit beautiful but also a bit grotesque. <laughs> This Canadian artist created the meat dress right before Lady Gaga ever wore it. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, so this meat dress it was on display and it slowly decomposed throughout the exhibition. In Singapore, at a time you want like, you aren't allowed to eat bananas in public. Like, what? Okay, I'm not going... Okay, well, Singapore is my place then. <laughs> but that's very interesting. Let's see, Lady Gaga did that meat suit. Yeah, she did. She did do that meat suit, yes. But as you can see, it was, fir like, it was first made in 1987. Okay, everyone, I think I'm now going to remove this from the heat. I'm going to take a chance and remove this from the heat. And once it cools, I think it's going to thicken a little bit by itself. I'm just going to take a chance. <laughs> the worst that can happen is that I get this inherited. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to turn this off. Remove this from the heat for a moment. Just gonna let that do its thing for now. <laughs> Let's see, um, I'm gonna move us back to the other station, so bear with me, everybody. You're crapping me up. We are moving. We <laughs> let's see. Let me get the angle right. Okay. I think it's safe to remove the the apron for now. <laughs> oh, all right, sees. All right, sees. Okay. Let's see. A little while well, that cools, a little bit of art together. Let's see. Kinky. <laughs> 
they oh that was so funny um that was so weird that she did that <laughs> let's see um new here so why holy quail not holy duck or anything else oh yeah corn well uh, I like I thought of the holy quail because it sounds like the holy grail and I'm a really and I'm a big sucker for puns and I like the idea of the search for the holy grail and the search for the holy quail it's like you've come you've arrived the search is over because <laughs> I mean maybe it was just a typo all along who knows maybe it never was grail maybe it was quail all along and they just it was just a typo error that no one corrected. So no, it's like, actually, no, it's it's the holy quail, not the grail. We've been searching for the wrong thing all this time. <laughs> and how fitting it is. Oh, thank you, boss baby, still. Thank you much. <laughs> yeah, no, I... Uh, how should I put it? Um, I, I think I, like, I just... I don't know, I, I just love that it kind of also references a little bit of art history because a lot of art and, and throughout history has always been about um, representing um, religious tropes. And I thought, well, like, since this is an art stream, why not have something that, ha why not have a name that also references a little bit something artsy? <laughs> Let's say, I'm like, oh yes, welcome to the Quill Drink Corn. <laughs> The textbooks were wrong. Yeah, Agent 008, no, 0028, yes. The textbooks had it all wrong, all wrong. <laughs> okay, so moving forward with our, um, with our saga, with our, like, uh, I should put it, uh, with our baking uh, connotations, the next thing we're gonna be doing is making some meringue. That, I don't think I'm gonna mess up, so I think we're okay. <laughs> Um, so glad to be here. Aw, Corin, I'm really happy that you're here too. Oh, it feels like you've always been here, to be honest. Let's see. Oh, this will be fun. I know Boss Baby still. It's going to be loads of fun. Loads of fun. But, um, but yeah, no. So I thought, so the meat dress has set the mood for us. Um, but um, moving forward with another piece before we get started on the meringue. It's this series called Color Me by Bernie Steerly. Now, Bernie Steerly is from South Africa, and she was very intrigued by this idea of, um, how should I put it, of the word color, of to be a color person. And she wanted, so she created this body of work where she placed herself and photographed herself covered in different spices, like spices that represented um, different connections of her heritage. So she's covered in turmeric in one, paprika in another, cloves in a third. And, um, and yeah, so it's like, it's kind of embracing this idea of like, what is her identity? Is her identity defined by her ethnicity or is it defined by the color of her skin? And um, so, there's the, so there's this play happening there. And what drives the meaning of the work is the spices that she covers herself with. I was waiting to see if she had the whisk and the action mixer. I do have... I am packing heat, so things are about to get gnarly in here. <laughs> Let's see. Um, same. <laughs> White face, wow, racist much. <laughs> You see, but there, but there you go. You know, that's that's the idea that it wants to portray to us. This work. Well, she must be a well seasoned artist. <laughs> that's so good. That's really good. Um, she has a mixer with a whisk. Smart girl. I know, right? <laughs> Some sometimes the the quail things in the kitchen. Let's see. Um, I moved up to a stand mixer years ago. Best purchase ever. Oh, I'm. I really want to get a stand mis mixer. I really, really do. But I um, haven't been able to afford one as of yet. So until then, I'm going to stick with the little mixer that could. <laughs> little mixer that could. So let us see. Let us see. Okay, for meringue. Um, let's see. We're going to beat our three egg whites that I already have separated in a bowl until they get frothy. And um, then we're going to add our cream of tartar with a little bit of vanilla. That's a mama quail trick. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and um, and then we're gonna after that gradually add some like uh, some granulated sugar. So how hard can this be, right? How can the quail go wrong? <laughs> Let's see, stiff peaks. Yes, we need stiff peaks. <laughs> Wolf Knight. Oh, Wolf Knight is here. Wolf Knight, you're just in time. Uh, things are about to get a little bit loud because, as you can see, I'm packing heat. Um, okay. Perfect. All right. Red Venus, Wolf Knight. Yes, uh, yes, Wolf Knight. I'm so happy to have you here. <laughs> All right. So let's see. We've got my egg whites all separated. We've got our mixing. Mixing, 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 we're sure. Now, usually I do this standing up, but for the purpose of this stream, so I don't look like the headless horseman, I'm gonna sit, do this sitting down. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, that's satisfying. <laughs> um, if it goes wrong the other way. <laughs> Let's see. Um, turns out, no, it turns out me, the Blue Phoenix, have something in common in addition to our admiration for La Quail. Aw, oh, that, ain't that sweet? Ain't that so sweet? Aw, shucks. No, what can I say? All of you are the best of the best right here. You are the best. How can you all not get along? You have so much in common. The Quail Gen only accepts the prime candidates of the world. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's turn up the speed. Because I'm an impatient quail! <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> let's see. I'm gonna try to whip these fast. <laughs> I love the sounds of Rex Corrin. <laughs> Mixer SMR. Oh yes, embrace. <laughs> crank it up, okay. Boss Baby still says to crank it up. We're cranking it up. Okay, it's looking good. We're getting frothy. They're not bad? Cool. I can feel the vibrations with all of you, that's for sure. Okay, I'm gonna crank it up a bit more. Who knew this would be an ASMR channel? <laughs> okay, we're gonna move it around, okay. It's looking really good, people. down. Want to check on the peaks? Oh yeah! Oh yeah, we got something going here! <laughs> I think we did pretty good for ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but yeah, that sounded like the ice maker chord. That's so funny. Let's see. Um, I'm so glad that it has not shattered all over the place, including your shirt. One thing I am, I am a very clean baker. <laughs> That's the one talent I have. Uh, make sure to slow it down before you remove it. Thank you, Phoenix. I did. <laughs> Think about it. I do need those reminders. I'm not to be trusted, people. I'm not to be trusted. Let's see. Um, that was quick. I know, it was pretty quick. But yeah, it's a very powerful little thing. I mean, just like, don't underestimate this little guy. <laughs> like, uh, she dares to wear black in the kitchen. I do. I do. Only the quail. <laughs> All right, okay, now we need to add our creme de tata. <laughs> that was oddly satisfying. All right, it's our cream of tartar. Let's see, I don't want to forget the sugar. You can see how I had everything planned out for everyone here. Everything all measured and good to go.
Don't tell Mama Quail, everyone, but I almost forgot to add the lemon zest. <laughs> She'll never know. She'll never know. <laughs> She'll never know. Okay. Mm, let's see. I would have, um, let's see. What do we have here? I would have flour and egg white everywhere by now. <laughs> oh, you're too kind to me. Uh, what is she baking? I am, both night, I am baking a lemon meringue pie, actually. Lemon meringue pie, because lemons were a really, um, challenging thing for paint like for artists to paint back in the day so I thought we'll do an homage to them we'll do an homage to them <laughs> let's see let's see uh but speaking of food another body of work that I wanted to show of you is um the, these works um by Foodman School which really his um that's not his name but that is his handle on Instagram and it's a really interesting body of work because what he does is he makes masks out of food, out of his food specifically. And um, with that food, like he makes his masks and then he eats it after, after the fact. But he what he did is that he wanted to challenge himself in 20, like 2021 to um, make at least a hundred of these food masks, which I think are really interesting and engaging. Where's the mama coil? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, what a clown. I know, right? I know, they, it's, they're really entertaining, these works. They're really entertaining. It's um, a different form of playing. I guess they say you shouldn't play with your food, but this artist takes it to a whole new level. <laughs> like, oh, they, I think that one's hilarious too, Phoenix. Let's see, so I'm gonna just whip in this cream of tartar. My mom shouldn't have whacked me when I play with my food. Exactly, Corin, right? No, you gotta, sh you gotta show her this. What did I come back to? <laughs> Sorry, Twinkle Toast. <laughs> uh, a very uh, interesting body of work where the artist uh, makes masks out of his food. The quail remains clean. <laughs> oh yeah, these are looking nice. This is so frothy. I think this looks very pretty. I think this looks so nice, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see, sorry, Mama Quail is texting me. <laughs> Mama Quail is texting me, so I need to make sure I'm following everything correctly. Take the pan out of the bottom one. Ah, I know what she's talking about. That did not go according to plan. <laughs> it's okay, though. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why one should buy a stand mixer. <laughs> but it's okay. It lived. <laughs> mm, it's good too. <laughs> okay. The quail needs to clean this up just a little bit. <laughs> If anyone wants to clip that moment, feel free. <laughs> okay, it's like it never even happens. <laughs> Thank you. 
No one will be the wiser. <laughs> we just got some egg whites everywhere. <laughs> it's all good, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's see. Poor mixer. I know Trickle Toast. Poor mixer. But hey, this is the little mixer that could. Sure. <laughs> Um, mama slips and falls in the middle of the night. No, 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 no. Don't say that. <laughs> the mixer is built, um, board tough. Yes. I think this should be a commercial for the, for the little mixer. <laughs> Let's see. What does Mama Coil say? Okay. Time for us to add Z vanilla. Now there is no exact measurement for this. Just a little bit of vanilla. Mama Quill said, I was like a teaspoon, tablespoon, she's just, just eyeball it. I'm like, okay, whatever eyeballing means. <laughs> so we'll get to the bottom of this, everybody. Mm, let's see. The mixer, like, uh, yeah, no, this is a four tough mixer, everybody. Four tough mixer. As you can tell, I'm getting egg whites everywhere. <laughs> okay. Uh, me oh, I almost forgot. Never forget to shake the vanilla. <laughs> Never forget to shake the vanilla. Apparently it's a thing. <laughs> it's shaken, not stirred. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Just a little bit. Use a spoon? Oh, use a spoon. I should have. But I didn't. <laughs> Build for tough, eh? Okay, hold on. Okay, turn this off. There we go. Okay. The little mixer that could. Here we go. Yeah. This is gonna be delicious. Okay, just doing a little beating for that. Now we're just gonna do a little bit of. Um, sugar apparently it's like a tablespoon at a time so let's just pray for the best everyone <laughs> oh gosh mm. but um moving on with this another piece that we have right here is a really interesting body work by uh, daniel Pe peori now daniel peori what he did um these are actual table sets of people who went to restaurants and once they finished eating, the artist said, would you like to buy your table? And then they are, and then like, if they said yes, the artist would then take their table, all the plates, all the cigarette butts, all the leftover food and glue it to a hard, to a hard surface for them to take home. And in turn, it created these abstract works, which were basically supposed to be a reflection of reality. Like they're, they're sort of abstract, but they're a representation of one's personality, like the uh, moments in time, the events. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of an interesting body of work. I think it's really nice. Ah, now this is really looking like meringue, everybody. <laughs> This is really looking nice. I'm gonna add a little bit more sugar. This is when having a stand mixer would come in handy. So you could, so you can um, add the sugar a little bit at a time and not have to stop in between. Just glue the dirty dishes to the table and sell it. Yeah, exactly, Boss Baby Still. This is one of those situations where you think, why is the art like this, like why even, why didn't I think of that? And it doesn't involve skill, it doesn't involve a painterly skill or anything, the artist is just taking what's already there and, and basically encasing it in a moment in time. Let's see, this is great for guys for first dates. <laughs> When she asked us what uh, we had 20 years later during the anniversary. Oh, that is such a sweet thought. Yes. Oh, man. That, that would be wonderful. I like. I, I think that would be a really beautiful thing to, to do, actually. <laughs> I kid you not, everyone, but this meringue is looking really good. <laughs> there is hope for me yet. There's 
hope for the quail. I would wait for the wedding date myself. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because what if you did, you bought a table setting for each of every single first date you ever had? What, what if the date went terribly wrong and then you're stuck with all these table sets? <laughs> that would be pretty sad if you ask me personally. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited too, Corin. I'm just like, I want this done. <laughs> now, I love my mother's lemon meringue pie when she makes it. I don't know how it's gonna be but if I make it, if it's still my favorite, but we'll see. Oh yeah, this is like a drop egg. Yeah, so how many tables do you guys have in there? <laughs> uh, like here in my kitchen or just in this uh, in this kind of collection? <laughs> collection of first dates. Oh, we're almost there everyone. It's looking so good. <laughs> Meringue is actually Mama Quill's favorite, so I'm going to um, take her some in a little bit to see what she thinks. And maybe it'll help cheer her up, like cheer up her sick feels. Let's see, I'm just gonna dump. That's it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I gotta walk my dog, but I'll be back to see the masterpiece lemon pie. Oh yes, well, like please do. We're almost done. We're almost there. Hold on. Just gonna quickly. Coat this, we go the sides of the meringue, just kind of remove it. Let's see. Because now things are getting stuck to the sides of the bowl. I want to make sure all the sugar is evenly distributed. <laughs> like I said, it's Mama Quill's favorite meringue, just the meringue alone, so I gotta get this right. I gotta get it right. There's probably a song that goes like that, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. <laughs> Let's see. My mom would always say something isn't right, but when she'll go and tell the neighbors how good it was. Aw, that's so sweet. Yeah, no, my mom does the same. It's so sweet. I bet. Um, Wolf Knight, well, now I don't want to miss it. Oh, don't worry, Wolf Knight. You go walk the dog. Don't worry. I'm a, like, as you can see, I'm a slow baker. of like... Okay, there we go. There we go. Oh, it looks so good. And I think with that, we can call this meringue. I think we can now call this meringue, everybody. Let's see. After our almost near catastrophe. <laughs> Okay, moment of truth. Let's see. Hmm. Don't know if it might need a little more sugar. Hmm. Let's see. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call quality control. Hmm. Not the sweetest of meringues I've ever had. Hmm. The only way we can really know is if Mama Quail tastes it. <laughs> Let's see. I gather she is making a lemon meringue pie. Yes, Boxy, I am making a lemon meringue pie. We're just doing the meringue part. <laughs> And um, as soon as I get this meringue approved, I think we can we can start assembling. But um, but until then, let's see, let's see. 
I want to show you all a, a couple more pieces, some video pieces actually. Okay, so there's this, um, like there's this other body, like, there's this other artist that made, um, that really wanted to embrace this idea of culture and food all together, but also most importantly, the act of eating food. Okay, let's see. Mama Quill's off in the corner, so I'm gonna have her taste our meringue. <laughs> What do you think? Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Let me get you another one. Yeah, it's just not as sweet. It's not very sweet. I should make it sweeter, right? Yeah. Okay. I'll make it sweeter. Mm, I would eat it a little more. Sweet a little more and look sweeter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's too soft. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay, everyone. We need more sugar. <laughs> This is gonna be a sure to taste scenario. <laughs> okay, so let's see, what did I miss? Um, she dropped the spoon. I know, I know she did drop the spoon. I handed it to her and I thought she had it, but that still goes to show how sick she is, the poor thing. Um, but it's okay, it's okay, she's okay. The spoon's alive, the spoon's okay. We'll get a clean spoon, it's all good. <laughs> she drops the spoon and she drops the mic. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one, okay. Um, no, no. Sorry, that's the one we just looked at. Okay, so this was the um, this is the pieces that I was talking to you about earlier, where the artist all that he did is that he would go to these various different towns and and like and ask a person, a native of that environment, to eat like like he would prepare him a dish and ask them to eat the dish in front of them. Just it's just like for a sixty second video, but it's kind of ASMR y but also it's to represent this importance of food, culture, and the manners surrounding food and the type of foods we eat with the cultural background that we have. <gasps> they gave you a penny instead? Oh, that's terrible, I'm so sorry. That's disappointing. Like you need to use powdered sugar yourself? Yeah, like I've used powdered sugar before, but so for some reason I seem to get better results with the granulated. I don't know why. It's just to use his own. <laughs> Anything to art up the pie? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna be doing like nice classic stiff peaks <laughs> with the with the meringue. I don't know. We'll see how artsy I get with it. I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Y you like the performance art theory? Nice, nice. I'm glad you do. Yeah, like it. Um, it definitely like it, it definitely has like this like it's like a really big body of work these are only like three videos that i was able to find off of youtube but um but yeah no they they're quite um meditative in a way and it's the way that the that the person that's eating like engages with you just staring at you in the face it's it feels very intimate it feels very personal Activating twinkle toes. Okay, let's see if that was enough sugar. I'm gonna have to get a new spoon. <laughs>
Okay. Let's see the verdict on this one. Much better. Much, much better. Hmm. Maybe just a tad bit more sugar. Just a little bit more. I'm just gonna put a little more. <laughs> Oh gosh, if anything, I'm gonna get a sugar rush tonight. If I if the quail doesn't sleep, we know why. <laughs> Let's see. I like the bird in the background. Yeah, crunch, crunch, exactly. Let's see. There's some opportunity to art up a basic brown lemon meringue pie somehow. I do agree, Boxy. I do agree. There's gotta be a way. If anything, we will find the way. <laughs> but I'm happy you all enjoyed that. That, that body of work, that sort of ASMR pieces. Um, let's see, let's see. Well, actually, that leads us to our last art piece, but I'm gonna do that as soon as I'm done beating the, the heck out of this meringue. <laughs> let's see. Fire! <laughs> Is that the same as granulated in quantity? I think so. I think so. Like this one, at least at least for this recipe that I found, it just acts for the granulated sugar, so I can't say for sure. Usually, like the reason why I'm struggling with this meringue a little bit is because I usually like to do Italian meringue where you boil the sugar and then you drizzle it into the like in, into the egg whites but i'm not doing that for this stream because i usually have since it's not a standing mixer i would have to have mama quail hold it for me <laughs> while i pour the hot sugar in so i knew if i attempted to mix and pour the sugar in at the same time the bowl was going to go flying across the room so i cannot say much about this recipe per se <laughs> let's see uh, let's see. Does powdered sugar give a better texture? Hmm. Hmm. Like I said, I'm more I'm more of a Italian meringue girl than a Swiss meringue. What we're making right here is a Swiss meringue, and um, the Italian meringue is the one that um, that you use the drizzling part. For me, that one's better because of um, it's not so hard and dense in texture. It's a bit more airy. And um, oh, night warrior, thank you for the bits. Thank you much. Um, it's not. It's um. It's a little more light and airy, and it's also a lot more shinier. So that's why I like the Italian meringue better. Um, I'm glad to spend time with my queen. Oh, it doesn't matter if you're ta talking about art and making a pie. I just like spending time with you. Likewise. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And having you all cheer me on while I bake, in a in, a, in an attempt to make my mom's legendary desserts is like really means a lot to me. Thank you. Let's see. Might be better at eating pies than making them. I think I am. <laughs> that goes for two of us. <laughs> Let's see. Um, what about us? Don't don't you love us? Also, oh Phoenix, of course. Of course. I adore you to pieces. I love you all equally. I love you all so much. I really do. This year would have been incredibly incredibly lonely without you guys. It really would have. I don't I can't imagine what ending this year would have been without all of you. Now we're talking. <laughs> I think Mama Quill would like that meringue. <laughs> Let's see, meringues look like works of art. They do, white ball. Oh, little white ball. I just love having you here. Mm, I know I love my queen, but I love all of you and you're my family. And I care about you all very much. Oh, aren't we all so lucky? We're so lucky to be here and have each other. Gosh. Oh, gosh. I'm so incredibly grateful. So, so grateful. I mean, all of you are just true treasures, you know that? And, I'll, and I'm not gonna lie, this pie, I'm, I'm the one here baking it, but this has been, I think, our first collaboration, if you think about it. I think we need to do more collaborations together. Maybe something that's more in my wheelhouse, more in my forte. <laughs> but I think next year we need to start making some art together, everybody. 
I think the time has come. <laughs> Something where we can all engage on it and you're not just watching me make things. Love you also. Aw, how sweet. Aw, look at all the love that's going on here. Aw, shucks. <laughs> Oh, I think, think look, look what you started here, Night Warrior. Look what you got going on for us here in the chats. So much love. We're so lucky. See? Oh, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I think Mama Quail will approve of that. Okay. The moment of truth. The quail is going to have to start to assemble the pie. <laughs> So I'm going to see about lowering the camera a little bit. Ta-da! Now we can see the pie. I'm a genius. <laughs> oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is as good as it's going to get. <laughs> Please be careful with us. I will, Night Warrior. I promise I will. I will. Let you show up with caution. It's time. I know, Phoenix. The time has come. Okay, let's see. I'm going to make sure you all can see the pie. So we're just going to pour our filling in so fingers cross something bad happens. <laughs> okay. Okay, just going to let that settle for a moment. Definitely needs more. Don't want it to overflow. I think it'll fit. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing. No mishaps as of yet. No mishaps, everyone. <laughs> this is good. This is good. I think we're good. I think it's okay. <laughs> now, I'm gonna, not going to lie, my table isn't exactly the most stable thing on this universe. So the pie might look a little bit off. <laughs> it's only because the table is just not level. And I am really, really happy to report that I just tasted the filling and it is so good. <laughs> we did it! I think I made something decent. <laughs> okay. Um, like, please don't drop the pie. I'll try my best not to. Okay, so for our last piece, um, we're going to be talking about um, some work that I think is one of the most successful food artists that we have today. Um, like uh, she goes by like her last name is Rubel and she's a conceptual artist and her work is very much um, interactive it's an interact it's interactive bodies of work um, where she uses a lot of mass quantity when it comes to food um, she really embraces um, like the sheer mass of food but also um, it's very interesting how she displays the food and the way that she displays the food and how people interact with the food um, enhances the message behind each piece. So I was able to find this really good movie, so I hope you all enjoy it. Um, 
Uh, she's definitely an artist to admire. Some people get upset by what they perceive to be a tremendous amount of waste or decadence or luxury or exclusivity, which is really not an accurate read of of my work. I, I see what I do as much more of a commentary on waste and decadence than waste and decadence in itself. In many instances, my work is replacing something that is not art that would exist there. So I, I do a project for Performa, the Performance Art Biennial. They'd have a gala that night where I'm doing my project, and that gala would use every ounce of meat that I use, except I, I might present that meat in a way that where the, the, the waste of it and the um, decadence of it is apparent. So in a way, any critique of my work along those lines is, in my opinion, a tremendous success because it's, it's bringing to the fore something that's usually in the background. Jacques Torres created a, a chocolate facsimile of Jeff Koons' rabbit sculpture. A lot of people ask me if I had Jeff Koons' permission to do the rabbit sculpture, which is so funny because if I were to get permission, which was totally unnecessary, it would be from the person who created the inflatable rabbit, not from Jeff Koons. They, they were on a pedestal with a hammer next to them, and the minute people could get their hands on them, they destroyed all of them. And I turned to Jacques, and I, I thought he would be in tears. And he said, that's always what happens to my chocolate, Jennifer. <laughs> you know, it's sort of, it's all part of what normally happens, except it's, it happens in a way that's concentrated and intense and um, emotionally really evocative. Well, I definitely don't have a mantra. I think I have a set of beliefs um, that visually have a lot to do with following the materiality of something. So, I, I mean, my beliefs are very aligned with minimalism. I'm just using a different material. Um, and then in terms of the work that I do, the cake spatula? I should you know, it needs spatula. to um, a good idea. be in a fairly direct conversation with art history. Um, because I'm working in a medium that is um, either not yet a common medium inside of art or you can only watch. will never end up yeah, being a common watching. medium. You know, the medium of food has existed in art history since the beginning of the 20th century. But uh, because I'm working in that medium, I'm very mindful of its um, exclusion, occasional inclusion in art history, and that keeping in mind that engagement is really important. I mean, one thing about this, you know, compared to creating work alone in the studio, is that it's so interacting with the public and interacting with chefs and interacting with all the chefs here is really interesting. And then also while I'm doing that, I always think about Marina Abramovich and how, you know, every prep cook here is on their feet all day doing something that's, that involves a ton of endurance. And it, it's, I mean, I've been thinking about her nonstop. I was an intern at the Food Network when Mario was doing his first show called Molto Mario. And he's just an amazing, amazing human being, amazing chef. Mario constantly talks about how important it is that this place um, get people to go home and cook. That, that, is, that is the goal of this place. And so as he was talking about this, and he was talking about the butchers, and he was talking about the fish restaurant, and also the fish no, monger, um, he came up with this idea of the vegetable butcher. I mean, conceptually for me, and again, it's not an art piece, but conceptually for me, what was interesting about this is the idea of inventing a profession. 
I think it's a lovely thing. I don't know if it'll take off or work. I know here it's certainly very good for Italy and it's good for the customers. You know, people, and anything that's good for the business and good for the customers usually is a profession that takes hold, you know. <laughs> Art is often a zone where people take whatever medium they're interested in, put it inside of art, percolate it, and something comes out that's really interesting that they could never have done inside of um, what they do. And I think it's been true of video, I think it's been true of, um, of photography, I think it's been true of writing and poetry. You know, the great thing about the visual arts is that any medium is okay. Um, it's, and in some ways it's the realm where you can be most free to explore that medium. Whatever a, a food item is uh, has a tremendous influence on what I decide to do with it. I'm interested in, in food as a medium to express something that has to do with many things. So, sociology it has to do with socioeconomics. It has to do with what is and isn't art. Um, but food politics to me, I'm just not that political person and food politics in particular is, just, is not a lot of interest to me. I'm mostly inspired by the I don't know, Fergie, but I think it's just It would have been a perfect be a buy place if I hadn't it built it so much. A, um, some constraints of some kind, physical or temporal constraints. And then um, the, and then once, once I figure out the food that I want to connect to that, then the constraints of the food come into play. But it's not, I don't really, it, it's very much, I'm unbelievably pragmatic and practical. So in some ways, a lot of what I do has to do with the most practical way of, um, of delivering a food to a certain number of people. I don't do performance art. I'm not that interested in, um, in, in that being a part of my work. But I think the performance artist really blew open something having to do with the relationship between the viewer and the quote unquote object that's really, really important. For me, it's really the next piece that who captures guess me as an artist. I'm really proud of the work of I've done, one. but for me, it's the of. process of doing it that's fulfilling and gratifying and exciting. So people often want me, you know, they'll see something they like and they want me to do it again. And I always say, I'm 40 years old. I didn't get to do what I do until I was in my mid to late 30s. Maybe I have however many years left to create whatever new things I can create in the world, and I'm not going to waste one single opportunity doing something that I've done before, you know. And there you have it, the last piece to conclude our great makeup stream. <laughs> yeah, this pie, I'm telling you all right now, is not gonna go in the oven <laughs> it's not gonna go in the oven because um because we have a an edge of glory overflow problem <laughs> every time i try to spread the meringue the filling goes closer to the crust <laughs> um so i'm not going to risk it <laughs> I'm not going to risk it. We're just going to leave it as 